unajua ngombe aina ngapi? Najua ngombe za kienyeji na hizi za grade. Kwa grade unajua gani? Hizi hizi ngombe za freshan. Hizo ndio wanazielewa sana kabisa. Kawaida na ya freshia. Kuna jersey freshian hizo freshia asha na fresh unadhani anapatikana sehemu gani ama msitu gani Kenya ah uh, freshian ni ngombe inaweza kaa kwa mahali popote juu ni kuridwa inaridwa na na mtu hata akiwa kwa boma i think mo hiyo si juu vizuri lakini kuna maana naona kuna ndiko fresh fresh <laughs> nakuru I guess in Nakuru ya yeah. Nakuru na Moranga Msitu wa Bana Freshan unaweza zipata kama pande ya Naivasha huko ngombe anatoaga lita ngapi kwa siku uh, inalingana na unaipeta kula aje yeah. oh, ukifikiria ni kama lita ngapi ona ona minimum ama maximum minimum 5 to 10 yeah na zenye zinatoa lita kama tano, ine, sita, lakini mingi zinatoa kuanzia tatu, kwenda juu ngombe ndamu utoa lita ngapi kwa siku ngombe ndamu utoa lita ngapi tuseme kutoka 5 liters kwenda juu ama 10 ngombe uh. ndamu hana maziwa kuanzia kama lita hamsini hivyo kwenda mbele <laughs> ndio fresha wako atoe maziwa. Okay. Fresha ni ngombe wa maziwa. Ndio atoe maziwa kwa zaidi. Unadhania unafaa kumlisha chakula ina gani? Uh, Unaweza kulisha majani ngombe na unga. Eh. Uh. Sasa labda nyasi, nepia grass. Maji kwa wingi. Duka hizo. Kuna miss jam na nini na brain. Okay. Yeah. Nyumba ngombe inaitwaje? na kizungu tunaita kiugo mboma ya ngombe mastitis ni nini kwa ngombe mastitis ni ugonjwa yenye inashika kwa nini kwa matiti ya ngombe hiyo ni ugonjwa ya ngombe inapatikana sehemu gani kwa ngombe kwa mdomo Yes, Hiyo swali imekuwa ngumu bana. Ugonjwa wa matiti ya ngombe. Yes, it's you. Na hada ni kiungo gani kwa ngombe? Ati? Hada. Hada. Ah, yes, it's you. Na colostrum ni nini? Colostrum, ah, yes, it's you. Colostrum ni nini kwa ngombe? Cholesterol. Cholesterol, uh, I'm not sure kai nashikanga ngombe but najua ni ile inakoanga na nini ile kukua na mafuta mingi kwa mwili Ada inapatikana ni sehemu gani kwa ngombe Ada ada si diomatiti inakamuliwa na colostrum ni nini Colostrum li ngombe ngombe akishaza hiyo okay. hiyo maziwa yanatoka ikiwa kama yelo yushivi My name is Dr. Patricia Wandia, a veterinary surgeon by profession, uh, with a passion for animals and working for Unga Farm Care as a technical representative. And my function is to aid farmers to make better use of what they have, the resources they have for profitable farming and to correct and rectify the small costly mistakes that we see in farming for better, profitable, enjoyable farming. There are two different types of cows. There are the indigenous cows and there are exotic cows. And uh, we are depending on the purpose of what you want. We have some that are dual purpose. We have some that will be mainly for meat and some that will be mainly for milk. So for for meat animals we have sahiwals, we have borant and uh, we have zebus which are exotic and hardy to diseases. Most of these animals are free range farming but you can also do uh feedlot farming for milk animals 
depending on what you want to achieve is it the quantity or the quality of milk that determines which animals you want to keep so for quality we have animals like frisian that will give high amounts of milk we have animals like ashas jerseys and ganses which will give you better quality milk but in terms of quantity it's going to be lower so those four are the most common uh, milk animals that we have around the country feeding a dairy cow for maximum milk production is uh, one of the most critical things in dairy farming so what you need to consider when you're feeding your animal is that you're feeding it for four purposes number one you're feeding it for survival or maintenance number two you're feeding it for production and number three you're feeding it for reproduction and finally for reserves so when you're feeding your animal you need to consider that if in that order given you miss out on one of the things something will go wrong you will either have poor production poor reproduction or you will have a poor animal body condition score so uh, when you're feeding your dairy animal you need to remember that 70 percent of the feed should be good quality fodder 29 percent should come from good quality concentrate we have available with us fugo dairy meal fugo maximil and fugo maximil plus which will cater for all you need for the 29% of the concentrate. So for 1% minerals, you need to give good quality minerals that are going to cater for the needs of your animal. And we have available Afiabora Maziwa, Afiabora Maziwa Tele, Afiabora Dry Cow, and Afiabora Joto Plus, all available for your animals depending on their need. For the Afia Bora Maziwa Tele, any animal that is doing 15 liters and above, that is what we recommend, or immediately after calving the first 100 days, Afia Bora Maziwa to any animal that is giving you 15 liters and below, below 15 liters. And for dry cow, the last two months of your animal, the last two months of dry cow before the animal calves. For Afia Bora Joto, we mainly recommend it for heifers, that are about to bull and also for cows that have been in long periods without showing signs of heat. How you milk your cows to prevent diseases like mastitis is very critical to your dairy farm. So what you need to consider is one, you need to clean the animal with clean water and use a paper towel for every teat to avoid transmission of mastitis or infection from one teat to the other use disposable paper towels for every teat of the quarter not do not avoid if you can to use towels since this will be your carrier for infection to either other animals or from one teat to the next one the second the second thing you need to consider is that before you actually get to cleaning your animal needs to lie down on a clean environment so that it does not pick up any bacteria while it's resting. So good housing, clean housing are also critical in preventing diseases like mastitis. Once you're done cleaning, you need to also have good milking uh, techniques. Do not pull the teats, rather squeeze the uh, animal is going to give you milk. Do not pull, that will cause injuries and once there is injuries internally, you will have problems like mastitis coming through. The other thing you need to consider is to use a good quality milking salve. We have available champion milking salve that has an anti, a disinfectant added to it. So this will help you to avoid injuries externally to the animal while you're milking. You, after milking, consider using a dip to reduce your chances of infection. And when you, during milking, ensure that you milk out everything from the teats. Do not leave any milk in the teats. The best practices for calf rearing are, one, environment. They should be born in a clean and safe environment. Number two is colostrum. This should be given at least 12 hours after birth of these uh, animals. It should not exit. And then uh, afterwards you provide milk, you can give milk, you give milk at 10% of the body weight of the animal. And we have milk replacers like Sprayfor and Afiabora milk replacer, which you can use to 
give the animal so that you're able to as well sell your milk and also achieve better results with your calves. So from around day seven, you introduce your calf to dry feed, that is a bit of hay, and also concentrates. The calf, the fugo calf winner pellets are ideal for that and they will give you the ideal weight where you achieve early calf weaning and uh, your weights will be ideal throughout. The bad thing is you need to have good uh, parasite control, both the ector and endoparasites. So for the ector parasites, we have alma ticks that takes care of the ticks, the mites and the lice on your animals. And for endoparasites, we have uh, leoxy and we have nemazo dewormers that you use to control endoparasites in your animals. You also need to have good and clean uh, housing for the calves to prevent diseases like calf scores and diseases like pneumonia. So it needs to be the ideal structure that is well ventilated. The requirements for a good cow shed are one, location. You need to find a place that is away from wild animals because of what we call transmissible diseases from wild animals to domestic animals. So even if you're near wild animals, at least a place that is fenced and safe. So location would be your number one thing. Secondly, your structures. The layout of your structures should be at least um, safe enough and sensible enough so that your stores are not miles away. Your milking uh, parlors are close to where the animals are, your feeding structure. So, and your structures are supposed to be ideal for the animals, no sharp corners to cause any injuries. The third thing that you, look, you need to look at is your flooring. It needs to be at an angle so that you have good drainage. You don't put it, um, it needs to be at an angle so that you have good drainage. It also needs to be a bit rough so that you don't have injuries and not uh, cause diseases like uh, foot rot, which may come due to bad flow for your bands. You also need to look at uh, roofing to prevent the animals from any harsh conditions, like direct sunlight, rain, and you also need to look at the size of your stalls when you're building them. They need to be at least 45 inches in terms of width. Your length you need to consider at least about 80 to 85 inches for the length of the animals to allow it easy movement. It should not be too big because the animal will keep turning around and you need the animal to rest. So you need to consider that the spacing. You also need to consider your feeding troughs and your water troughs. They should be not far from the animal and they should be done ideal in ideal structure. That is the size should be good enough at least to hold enough water for the animals and also feed 